PTSD, that's all kind of quieted down. It comes and goes, but not, it's not as bad as it used to be. But uh, I was thinking last night, you know, I had mentioned there's a guy named Jay Walker, and uh, he's an old head, you know, old school. He, I'm 54 and he's he's more old school than I am. Uh, he did his time in you know late 60s, 70s. But and I always say and I'll I'll say it now. I mean it, it was nothing nice when I was in prison. I caught the tail end of all that bloodshed. But. Uh, Guys in my generation, <clears throat> white guys anyways, we stood on the shoulders of warriors. I mean, in my case, I mean, this is common knowledge. I ain't giving nothing up. Uh, the organization I was in, a man named Joe Gancy started it. And uh, Joe was a warrior. Joe was a warrior. And it, it started for a good reason, you know. Uh, one of the main white guys in there, they were getting decked out. They were getting extorted. They were getting raped. And, you know, Joe would take up for a guy, and he'd say, okay, I, I took up for you. Now, if I need your help, you, 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 you better help me. Um, and he organized... Him, him and some of the other Thornydale Jarvis organization guys and Gaylords, Almighty Gaylords, you know, they kind of organized it and started a, a white prison gang. And it started out for a very good reason. And even today in Chicago, uh, from rival gang members, Joe is is respected because of the way he carried himself. He's one of those dudes, he's legendary, he's legendary, and for good reason. Not only was he, you know, being a tough guy, that, that don't mean shit. It, it, being a tough guy is a colossal waste of damn time. Uh, 
once you get a reputation, then you got people coming wanting to beat your ass just so they can say they beat you. And plus, there's always somebody can whoop your ass. It's just a, a colossal waste of time trying to be a tough guy. But Joe was a tough guy. And uh, he was also highly intelligent. Very, very intelligent man. Um, he could have been anything he wanted to be if he would have applied himself different, different ways. Uh, and he was a great leader of men. But, you know, we stood on the shoulders of people like, you know, Jay Walker. Um, back then, you know, it wasn't back in the 60s, 50s, the prison population was smaller. And there weren't a lot of gangs. There was little groups of guys that hung out and shit, but the gangs really sprung up as the, the prison gang sprung up as the prison population. We live in a country where there's private prisons and people make a hell of a lot of money housing convicts. Um, and all they do is they store you like cargo. It's like they take you on a forklift and just, you know, stick you in that little slot and rehabilitation. I'm a rare case. I'm a rare case. Uh, my heart was softened in there. Uh, I did a video about it, but that's neither here nor there. Jay, me and Jay were talking. I said, yeah, there's six of us. You know, and all the guys, we get together and we have a poker game every month. And every one of them has been in a maximum security penitentiary. All of them, except for Nate Dogg, have been in a prison gang. It's two different organizations. Shane's the only one that wasn't in the organization I was in, but Nate Dog was a new tribe. But he's my brother. Nate's part of that clique that we all had going out on the street. And that wasn't organized like, you know, big street gangs that ride under Finn Ball or, or Six Point Star. It was just a bunch of scarred up kids. When one of us didn't have, we helped the other brother out. I found a dad on like a old school biker coat, brotherhood, you know. And very many of us left. Uh, I said, there's six of us left. I told Jay to get together and everything. Now there's others. Like, uh, I sent a link to one of my videos to a good friend. Well, he's a brother, Scott. Uh, I'm not going to go into his story or anything like that. That's his business. But his brother, Johnny, was just a dear, dear friend of mine. Uh, he was my brother. He was part of that group. And see, we always, it wasn't just the guys that was in that group. It was their families. It was our families, you know. My family is your family. I'll protect them just like my own. Your old lady won't think about touching her. Won't lie to you. Won't steal from you. And if you need me, something happens, we'll go down together or we'll win together, you know, and everybody stayed true to that. Uh, there's one brother that's kind of out there right now, but I don't know. I don't like giving a lot of my videos out to where I'm from, you either love me or hate me. Uh, I just ain't got the time for drama and shit. You know, most of the things people would say about me, I'll say about myself. Most of it to be true. I was not a good person. Scarred up fucking kid, and I 
instead of dealing with that positively, I turned it all into violence, anger, drugs, and alcohol. I just tried to stay as numb as I possibly could. I didn't want to feel anything. And I fucked off so many years, so many years. But uh, I'm thinking about what I'm probably going to do. You know, me and Nate have tried to, the town I grew up in, I come back from about 15 years in Arizona. And it, it, it just broke my heart. I mean, it broke my fucking heart. The drugs have ravished that town. So many people I know went to high school with them, shit, they're dead gone. The brothers we ran around with during many love. Tommy got deported to Germany. They're all dead. All fucking dead. I mean, and then it ain't just our brothers and sisters dying. It's their children. I mean, and I get aggravated going to funerals. You know, you want to go show your respect, then you go and. While you're burying one brother for drug overdose. And I've had a few, you know, Billy Roberts, he was a brother to me. He got shot and tossed out a car in a drug deal. And, uh, a couple, one hung himself in county jail. I spread all the time. But yeah, I gave Scotty He's the one, I, I did a video about Scott before. Um, he and his wife called me up and said, hey, you know, it'd mean a lot if, if you guys would come up for Scott's 50th birthday party. He always looked up to you guys. And see, I could trust Scott. I trust Scott like a brother. Um, but I look up to Scott. It's not a guy that gets in a lot of fights and is violent. And, you know, that's, that's not the tough guy. Scott's a tough guy. He got himself clean. And he does shit the right way. I look up to him. He had something happen very traumatic. He's going through hard shit right now. I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I, I got that in other videos. I still got that shirt too, Prayers for Haley. Only pink shirt I wear with pride. But yeah, I love Johnny so much, man. And I, I come back from Arizona. I was over at Nate Dog's apartment, visiting him and, Nate comes out with the phone and he says, hey man, somebody wants to talk to you. Put the phone up to my ear and I said, yeah. Hey, how you doing, bro? And I'm like, oh, Johnny, man, you know. It was so good to hear his voice. And right before that, my wife, you know, we were, we were tired. We just moved 1,700 miles, me and my brother Bobby. Not my biological brother. When I say my brother, I'm talking about guys that I've known 35, 40 years, grew up with, kicked it on the bricks with. <laughs> we did that roof. Me and him did my roof whenever I came back. And, you know, moving, painting the house, just, we were tired. And I said, well, you know, Amy's wanting to get back home. I'll come over and see you though tomorrow, bro. He's like that, you know, and that'd be good. And it, it felt so good to hear his voice. 
I love Johnny. I still love Johnny. I love all of them. Every single one of them, and you can ask anybody that knows me, I would have died for any one of them. When we all got that little thing going when we were younger, it meant something to me. Johnny was an asshole like me. I mean, he'd get to drinking and get angry. So did I. Um, and we were all kids that in some way were damaged, you know. And I'm not going to speak for my brothers, but that's why I drank and did drugs all the time. I didn't want to. I just wanted to stay numb. But... You know, there's only not many of us left anymore. And we're, I told, I put a comment on there to Jay about, you know, the six of us getting together and playing poker every month. And he said he's the last one out of all his buddies he used to run with. It kind of makes me glad that my health is so bad with the emphysema, COPD, the thing going on in the brain. That's another story, and I, I don't, it don't even matter. Nothing can be done. But and doctors <laughs> told me years ago that I didn't have long. <laughs> they said they're surprised my heart didn't explode. They didn't. They just don't know the size of my heart. And it's not up to them when I go. It's up to God. That's, that's when I'm going. But, yeah, Jay said he was the last one out of all him and his brothers. And I got a lot of respect for, for Jay. Just, to, you know, I, I've never met the man face to face. But the words he uses, the way he writes things in comments, leaves no doubt in my mind he is very old school. And he has seen some wars and he has seen some fucking battles. Uh, but I've been thinking all night long, I've been thinking about all of them. Me and Nate have tried to compile a list. Every time we think we got everybody's names on there, we think of somebody else. About our, our brothers and sisters' kids overdosing, fucking going to prison. Yeah, it really broke my heart when I come back and seen what had happened at that time. And then there was people that, I mean, solid, solid people. Brothers and friends that you would, they were friends that a friend would want to have. They were solid, they were loyal. One of my very good friends, very good friends. I used to call him brother, but I can't call him brother no more. He wasn't in that thing we had going, but I grew up with him. He's my age. My oldest is 32, my youngest is 17. I've got three sons and I've got one daughter. They're all grown. We got the empty mess shit going on here. But it's just I'm having Nate help me. Uh, once every couple weeks I'm gonna put just a little short video out. Of one or two of those that we loved and we lost over there as a way of remembering and honoring them. That's why I try to, the main reason I try is because I want to give something back. I've taken a lot from this world. All the reason I try is because I love my wife. You know, I don't want to get taken away from her. But 
There's another reason. That's because I got a chance they didn't get. They were here one second and gone the next. Most of them drug overdoses. Had some friends been shot. Shit, I got like seven good friends that I grew up with that have gotten murder cases. It's just such a waste. I was looking at pictures last night. Seeing us all young, you know, we always had a beer in our hands. Or we was always partying, you know, party, party, party. One thing leads to another. That's the way all of us, I think, I'm not going to speak for them, but that's the way I dealt with my pain. Violence, drinking and drugging. That was my coping mechanism. But all those people, they are my family. I don't have no family except for my wife, children, grandkids. There's a bunch still alive, but they don't know me and I don't know them really. I mean, Left home an angry young kid, real young. And that's all me. But I think I'm gonna do some every couple weeks just put a video out. And uh few of their pictures, what they were like, and they were all they were all good people. Solid motherfuckers. Good, solid people. And they're all gone. I remember me, me and Mike Hooker. And don't laugh about his last name because he was Golden Glove boxer. He's dude's pretty tough. I think uh, Nate said he got some time out in Cali, either Cali or Florida, but first. Uh, drug rehab my mom tried to send me to, well she did send me to, this care unit on Grand Avenue in St. St. Louis. It was on like the eighth floor of Incarnate Ward Hospital. And my cooker was there when I got sent there. I was drinking, smoking pot. That's how it usually starts with people. But I'll never forget it. They, down at the one end, it was a juvenile unit, and then down at the other end, it was adult unit, but there were locked doors, so our juvenile unit was a lockdown. You couldn't just go in and out, and there was a guy down there just screaming and screaming and screaming. It went on like a day and a half, two days. That's the third to the fifth day. Oh my God, I think the shit's and cold and hot and rapid leg syndrome. The third through the fifth day was the worst with my withdrawals. But that guy's down the hall screaming. I mean, just screaming. I went up to the lady at the nurse station and I said, what the fuck are you guys doing to that man down there? And she said, oh, he's, he's going through heroin withdrawals. And I can remember thinking, Heroin. Don't fuck with that shit. <laughs> and all of us. I can see us all, man. Are we? It sounds like bullshit, but it ain't. Me and my brothers, we'd roof six days a week. And as soon as we were done working, we'd go home. We, we lived in different shotgun houses all over. But we'd go get cleaned up and we'd go hit the bars. I have puked off so many roofs in the morning, I have shit and roll off dumpsters, but we were there the next day and we were working. We needed beer money, <laughs> you know, they were fucking, but yeah, I, 
Now, I had one good friend I grew up with. And I loved him like a brother. I'd have died for him. But he lost himself. He's lost himself. His son is dying of cancer. And I find out he's stealing his son's fucking pain medication so he can feed his habit while your son's dying of cancer. He got his nephew and his niece strung out on the shit. He's just lost himself. He's not the same person I used to know. I still pray for him. I don't wish bad on him, but I don't respect him no more. And that's just the way I am. I'm not going to go up to somebody and sit there with a smile on my face if I don't respect them. Respect and trust. I tell everybody that trust is the most important thing in any relationship. Whether it's marriage, girlfriend, boyfriend, friends, it, it, trust. My wife knows I'm a fuck up, but she always gets the truth. Once you lie, then there's doubt, and it's accusations and battles. And me personally, the way I live most of my life, I can't trust a motherfucker. They're useless to me. I don't live my life like that no more. It's a tired, broke down man. But I've come to peace with all of it. Come to peace with all of it. I don't hate myself no more. I've forgiven myself. But I'm going to start doing some videos. And I'm going to put, you know, every couple weeks just to honor them and remember them. And that's why I can't fuck up, too. If I would fuck up this millionth chance I've been given, it'd be like spitting in all their faces, slapping them in the face. They're dead. They're gone. Some of them died real young. But I loved every one of them. Scott, he knows about the videos now. Um, I think, yeah, I sent them to Sammy Girl. She knows about them. My brother Tommy got to port Germany's daughter. She's been to prison. I'm so proud of her, though. She's clean. She got out. She's been clean a while now. She's really doing good. Yeah, there ain't many of us left. I'm gonna have Nate though help me round up pictures and just so they're remembered. I know Scott would help me too, but so I'm still, you know, because my drug addiction. Hey. Yeah, as usual, my. Video cut off on this phone. I'm, I bought a laptop. I need to finish setting that up and I'll have more storage space. Not real technical. I don't know much about the editing and stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I noticed in the first part of the video that I said I was kind of glad, you know, with my health and everything, that it was the way it was. Because, you know, Jay had said he's the last. Him and his buddies. And also, I got to apologize for the sound quality. I, I noticed that my voice as boisterous as it is, it's not very loud. I was trying to be quiet last night. My wife wasn't doing well. She's doing better today, thank God. But uh, <clears throat> I 
woke up, I must have fallen asleep sitting here on the couch last night. But, yeah, the reason I said that, I don't want to be the last one. Um, every time I bury one of them guys, it, it takes a piece of me with them. Whatever I love, I love with my whole heart. And they're, you know, as much my family <laughs> as, if not more. I always say, you know, family isn't just blood running through your veins. You know, family's the ones willing to bleed with you. And they were all loyal, good brothers. And they were all good people. Them drugs, uh, they've got a way of making you lose yourself. I always say the road, three roads when you're on drugs that you can take. One is to stop. Unfortunately, statistically, only one in ten that are on heroin quit and don't ever go back. It's only 10%. That is not good odds. Um, that's why I always joke with my wife. I tell her, well, I'm in the top 10% of badasses in the country. But those opiates are hypnotic. I mean, it just, I look at pictures of me when I was on that and I look like an AIDS or cancer patient. And I thought I looked fine. I'm gonna post some videos or some pictures at the end of this video of us back in the day first two I'm going to put up though is a picture of me at my son's graduation my youngest son we got the empty nest going on here now uh, but it was a job well done they all turned out good not one of my kids has been to jail or prison thank God they all have clean records they're all working, paying their own bills, and none of them are on drugs. And I thank God in heaven for that. My son Seth says, Dad, you taught us what not to do. And you know, as a father, you hear that, you're thinking, damn, man. You know, it just hits home how badly I failed in so many different ways. But if I can take those hits and feel that pain, and I was always honest with my children, maybe too honest. Uh, is that our car? It don't sound like it. You're lying. I'm glad yeah. I can't believe that one guy was shooting at that guy trying to steal his car. I ain't gonna take no human life over a fucking car that's fully insured. I mean, I'm sorry about you. I was just checking my alarm. Buddy. Go ahead and take the car. Uh, ain't worth a human life. Not my Harley. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But. Yeah, the guy, he, he went out there and started shooting at him, and, you know, it's like if somebody's coming through that front window there, they might hear something jack in the chamber. If they charge me, I'll take their win. If they try to run, i let them run. There's nothing in this house worth a human life, it's just, except for the life of my wife and my life. That's it. That's it. You 
trying to run away, I'll let you go, and I'll let somebody else deal with it. Uh, now, you're kicking in my front door. That's different, too, but... You know, there, there's a time to take a life and a time not to. When it comes to self-preservation, uh, I'll ask, you know, forgiveness before permission every day of the week. But, yeah, I'm going to post a couple pictures. One of me and Amy and my son Joshua at his graduation recently. And then one right at the end of my addiction. I look at that picture, I, I can see it in my eyes. I was just dead on the inside and I was exhausted. And I look horrible. Pencil neck, just real sickly looking. And that's what them, that heroin and opiates do to you. I mean, you, I really thought I looked okay. I was in that much of a fog and that much of a haze and that much denial. But, uh, and then I think every couple of weeks I'm going to try to put a few pictures and a few words about Someone I've loved over there and lost to drugs or stupidity. Um, shot by the police, suicide, killed violently, drug deals. Most, though, have been overdoses. It's a plague. It is an It's just a plague right now. So I'm going to get off here, finish my breakfast, and try to get this. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a afternoon. My serotonin and melatonin is all messed up in my body. Just tired. But try to get video up. Five o'clock's Harvey's live. And then Mitch should have a live tonight too. I try to watch those. My YouTube channels that I watch, and like I said, I never did this channel. I don't it ain't about money. I don't I'm not even monetized. I don't do the Patreon. I just wanted to try to help. I was hoping Maybe some young kid. You know, we all got choices in life. It's all you got in life. Time and choices. Use them both wisely because you don't get a retake. You don't get a retake. And I'm a firm believer in the fact that what we do in this life, we have to answer for. I just wanted to try to spare some kid, you know, everybody has things in life that hurts them, and, but when you deal with it wrong, and you turn to drugs and alcohol, or you get angry, and you, you, you know you partake in violence. You cause yourself further pain, and that makes you continue to be a victim. So much pain I went through because I did not deal with things positively. You know, once I left the house and I was out of there, that's all, everything from that point on. I can't put on mommy, I can't put on daddy, I can't put on anybody except for me because I chose to deal with the things that I went through in the way that I did. 
So I got nobody to blame but myself for that. And then you just, you, you make yourself go through a lot more pain than you ever had to. Choices and consequences. Choices and consequences. The difference now is, I don't know, it might just be me. But nowadays, you know, whenever I was younger, and I'd get arrested and I'd take a swing at a cop or I'd get ignorant with them and I'd get knocked upside my head. I didn't say police brutality. Whenever we were raised, we were raised where there were consequences for things you did. And people nowadays, it just seems like they feel like they can do whatever they want without consequences. Like they're so special. They're supposed to be able to do whatever the hell they want. Ever since, you know, I grew up and stopped being the person I was and, you know, when I get pulled over now, it's yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And you know what? I never have a problem. And I'm red flagged. You know, everybody talking about, oh, they might get shot. I am, <laughs> they had me and Amy out there in Arizona face down I, when I found out I was red flagged because of the gang stuff in prison. But, you know, I keep my hands on the wheel. I I comply, I do what I'm told to do, and I'm respectful. And I have not had a problem. When I got my ass beat is when I was running my mouth and spitting at them and telling them I had sex with their mother, and I'd have beat my ass too. I was a punk. So, you know, I, there's good and bad in everything. But all this, you know, defund the police shit is crazy talk. Believe me when I say, if there were no cops, I mean, I don't hang out with police officers, just an old habit. There's good and bad and everything. If there was no cops, out here would make prison look like a nice place. Because the wolf will feed on the sheep without mercy. And ravenously. You can take that to the bank. If I was the cops, they got that fraternal order of police or whatever, I know that's unionized, I'd, I'd go on strike. Before the first day was up, people would be on their knees saying, please come back to work. I don't even know why anybody would want to be a cop anymore. It never did pay good. And at least back in the day, you were respected. Now... You know, there's good cops, there's bad cops. Gabby Rezewitz was a good cop. You know, he, he's the one I woke up that time blackout drunk, covered in blood. He wouldn't tell me for a long time that I had two battery charges. I mean, I'm stripping down, I got no cuts on me, nothing. I'm, that was a spooky moment. <laughs> you wonder, oh shit, what did I do? But uh, I'm gonna get this video up and it's going to take me a minute because I don't know how to edit and I, I want to put some pictures in there and just a few short words about some people that I love just as a way to remember them and maybe show some young person that's getting started on the drug life, the consequences. You can quit, you can go to prison, or you can die. That's it. That's it. Those are your three choices. Nothing but love and respect. Peace out.